Well, let's start with the obvious. What are these and why are they here? Well, these are stairs that I built myself. I, bu I built them, me. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, don't want to get too big of a head. But I, I can hear you saying, I can hear your concerns already. You're saying like, wait a minute, Paul. Those, those aren't actually stairs. Those are just some objects you brought from home. I and mean, that looks like your coffee table. And you just put them on the platform and made them look like stairs. And I mean, come on, like they don't go anywhere. They, they just stop and they're not even that high. Okay, I, I hear your concerns, duly noted, but that is not the point. The point is that I made them, I built them, just me, all by myself. Well, actually, my wife helped me a little bit, but basically just me, all by myself. And I'm confident, I'm a confident person, I'm independent, I can climb these stairs that I built all by myself. Look at me, here I go. They're a little wobbly, but no, everything's good. Yes, wow. I climbed them all by myself. I'm in charge. I'm making my own decisions. I'm moving forward. Well, maybe. I gotta admit, sometimes it feels pretty good up here on my own stairs that I built all by myself. I mean, I feel like I, like I stand out, like, like somehow I'm more important, like, like I'm going places, like I don't know where, and I'm not really sure how, but, but it feels good, it feels good, right? Yeah, my stairs. My life, my choices. And today, we're going to look at someone in the Bible who was important, who was a leader, and we're going to see that that person made their own decisions. They did things their way. Let me describe him to you. He was as handsome as could be, a head taller than anyone else in the entire country. He was a valiant warrior, a fighter. He was a king, anointed by the prophet Samuel, chosen by God. And he was not only a king, he was the first king of Israel. He was powerful, authoritative. You probably realize I'm talking about Saul. And Saul experienced a rise, climbing the steps of influence and power. He was in charge. He was the one making decisions, the one building his own stairs. Are we ever like Saul? I have to admit, I think about it sometimes. And in 1 Samuel chapters 13, 14, and 15, we read about decisions that Saul makes we see the stairs that Saul builds. Some of these decisions may seem surprising to us. Others may appear in some way very logical. But the common theme is that Saul makes his own decisions. He builds his own stairs step by step by step. And we see how Saul consistently tries to justify his own actions, that he consistently attempts to make himself look good. 
And I would be lying if I didn't admit that sometimes I do the very same thing. In chapter 13, we read about a critical situation for the people of Israel and a decision that Saul makes. A large Philistine army has assembled to fight Israel and outnumbered. The people go into hiding. The Bible says they went in caves, thickets, among rocks, in pits and cisterns. They are basically scurrying like bugs about to be crushed, scrambling for their lives. And Saul's army is quaking with fear. The people need leadership, confidence, someone to follow, someone with a plan. And Saul waits seven days for Samuel to meet him and offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Then Saul decides he can't wait any longer. He must act. We can wonder what motivated him. Was it pride? Impatience? Perhaps insecurity. I have a flashback to him hiding among the supplies. But whatever the reason, Saul takes matters into his own hands. He will not wait. He will offer the sacrifice. He will assume a role that is not his. Saul is not a priest. You have done a foolish thing, Samuel tells Saul. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. And yes, we can, at least I can, sympathize that it might have been hard to trust God in that situation. But these are exactly the kinds of situations where we need to trust God. Those moments where we feel outnumbered, where the enemy is closing in, where it's difficult to wait. Those are not the moments to be building our own stairs. Those are the moments to trust, to rely on God, to listen for his voice, to wait until God directs, and then to act in obedience. Then we have this whole oath thing, and I'm jumping around a bit, so bear with me. Thank you for your patience and everything. And I want to look at Saul's oath in chapter 14, starting in verse 23. And he makes this oath, this popped out to me, right after God has given Israel the victory. On that day, the Lord saved Israel. In a moment where it's clear that the Lord is in charge, that the Lord has given the victory, Saul binds the people under an oath. He takes matters again. He's making his own decision. No one can eat until evening, until Saul has avenged himself on his enemies. And the troops were faint with hunger. And Jonathan sees delicious honey oozing on the ground. Can't you just smell it? So sweet. And Jonathan takes his staff. He doesn't know about the oath. He dips it in and he eats. The Bible says his eyes brightened. And later, this is revealed. And Saul says, 
Jonathan must die. Now, the making of an oath or a vow, it was a practice at that time in Israel's history. But personally, I feel this particular oath was off base from the start. Personally, I would question Saul's motives in making this oath. Is he making the oath to the Lord, or is he making it for himself? And does he even need to make it? It seems that there's foolishness, there's selfishness on the part of Saul. He continues to build his own stairs. Now, there is some room for discussion because this passage is a narrative. And like narratives, it shows the action. It doesn't always explicitly explain all the details. But certainly, we see the results of Saul's action. They're negative. Can we agree that Jonathan's assessment of his father is actually correct, that Saul has made trouble for the country. And in response to Saul's instructions to to kill Jonathan, the men actually refuse. They go against a directive by the king, and they prevent Jonathan from being killed. And as far as oaths go today, Jesus in Matthew 5, to 37 actually instructed us not to make them at all, but instead let your yes be yes and your no, no. We are called to integrity, to wisdom, and to truth. Let's look at chapter 15. Saul continues to do things his way, not following God's instructions, but building his own stairs, step by step by step. And in this narrative in chapter 15, Saul is instructed by God to completely destroy the Amalekites, killing all of them. We read about the Amalekites in Deuteronomy 25, verses 17 and 18, how they waylaid the Israelites during the Exodus journey, and they attacked those who lagged behind. It was kind of a despicable tactic. And we read how the Amalekites had no fear of God. Yet, the instruction to totally destroy is very hard to read. It's one of those passages, I think, that we all have difficulty with. Honestly, I still wrestle with it. Let's be absolutely clear that this is a specific command in this specific narrative. It does not apply to anyone today. Jesus calls us to love our enemies, to pray for those who persecute us. And Jesus cried out, Father, Forgive them as he hung, beaten, and bleeding on the cross. God in the Old Testament is the same God who became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, a God who upholds justice, a God of mercy and grace, a God who sacrificially loves all humanity. And when I come to passages 
that cause me confusion, ethical concerns, I realize I must not climb up on my own stairs and point a finger at God, but instead humbly pray for deeper understanding, deeper growth, deeper connection to the God that loves and saves me. In 1 Samuel 15, Saul does not entirely follow God's instructions. He does some of what God says, but not all. And there he goes. He continues to make his own decisions, to do things his way. And Saul spares the evil king, Agag, and the best of the sheep and cattle. Saul does what is good for Saul. And Saul sets up a monument in his own honor. I mean, he doesn't literally build his own stairs, but he literally builds a monument in his own honor. And when Samuel comes, Saul just makes excuses. He gives this story that, that he was saving the best of the sheep and cattle to make sacrifices to the Lord. Honoring God by disobeying him, it, it makes no sense. And what is Samuel's response? What is God's response to Saul? We read it, verse 15, 22 and 23. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than than the fat of rams, for rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. We see the end result of Saul building his own stairs. What about our stairs? You see, there's a different set of stairs. Stairs built by the God who saves Stairs of God's kingdom, built by the grand designer, the master craftsman. Stairs that God invites us to build with him under his guidance, his grace. Stairs where we serve God, where we reach out to those around us with God's love. We choose these stairs not to be more important, but to be a little more like Jesus. In our story, Jonathan knew of these stairs. Jonathan is a contrast to Saul. Saul chooses to build his own stairs, but Jonathan chooses to partner with God. Jonathan doesn't build his own stairs. He acknowledges that it is God who saves. And Jonathan makes this beautiful declaration that nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Those are stairs that I want to be a part of. 
I'll ask the music team to come forward. And if I were to describe God's kingdom as a set of stairs, I would say something like this. The kingdom of God is like a set of stairs, noble and true, built with intention and purpose by the grand designer, the grand builder. Climbing these stairs does indeed involve effort, but it is not the effort of striving to satisfy and please ourselves. Instead, it is the effort of submitting to and serving the grand designer of allowing God to shape and transform our lives. To choose the stairs of God's kingdom, we must choose Jesus as our Savior and our King, and then we will experience abundant delights both now and forever. And as we climb these stairs faithfully, we will forget about ourselves, our strength, our weakness. We will reach out in love to those around us, and we will be drawn more passionately and deeply in love with the one who made us, saves us, and loves us. I pray that you would receive these words in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.